They are conducting research on Mongolia's snow leopards. The team consists of both Mongolian and international researchers, and they began their work in earnest in 2008. Sumbe, a Mongolian member of the team, knows this area well. He locates a spot likely to attract snow leopards and sets up a sensor camera. The snow leopard lives at the highest altitude of any animal and is therefore one of the hardest to film. It is such a mysterious creature that even the residents of these mountaintops rarely see one in real life. It isn't even common to find snow leopard tracks. solitary creature, cubs will stay with their mother for a short while only. A female will generally have two cubs once every two years. Male cubs will stay for 18 months and females for two years before claiming independence. A trap is laid once the presence of leopards is confirmed by the sensor camera. The leopards are captured to research their way of life. Yeah, so there's the snow leopard has peed here, so it's a scent mark, like a signal for other snow leopards. And another one has peed here. This is the freshest. But you can't build a trap here because there's just yeah, the cliff is here. So therefore, when we they will probably follow this wall when they walk. So I made a nice little trail here for them. And the trap will be there instead. So hopefully they pee here and they walk. They follow it a little bit. But when we catch an animal, the animal will move and pull it out. And now it sends an alarm instead saying we have caught something that sends the signals to camp. In the period from 2008 to November 2012, 19 snow leopards were caught in this way. If the research team doesn't arrive within 30 minutes of receiving the signal, they risk the death of the leopard. Immediately upon arrival, they drug the animal and take small samples of blood and DNA. They also place a tracking collar around its neck. This collar sends an update on the leopard's whereabouts once every five hours. Six leopards are currently under surveillance. After a period of two years, the collar automatically drops off the leopard's neck. Tagged leopards bear the names of investors in the Snow Leopard Protection Fund. This leopard is named Adiyun. We witness two male ibex rutting on the steep mountain slopes. Male ibex rut in competition over females during mating season, or in order to assert their social standing. These two males of similar size lock their long, thick horns together in a display of strength. They are rutting to determine their relative status. This pitched battle for superiority continues until one contender is either exhausted or admits defeat. The ibex have migrated to the higher mountain pastures in order to avoid competition for grazing with other herbivores.
but wherever they go, someone is keeping a careful watch on them. That someone is the snow leopard. Ibex is the ideal prey of the snow leopard. It waits with bated breath until its prey wanders right up to its doorstep. This particular leopard is our friend, Adio. The Ibex flee as Adian makes her move. This time, the hunt comes to nothing. But there will be plenty more chances for success. The next morning, a red fox reveals itself. The fox prefers wide open spaces with a clear view of what's going on around it. This means that it sometimes crosses paths with a snow leopard. Judging by the fact that he's leaving his mark, this fox's den must be nearby. Arion is busy eating something at the foot of a rock not far away. She has caught a horse and dragged it up to the spot. Snow leopards will not be put off hunting just because its prey's body is bigger than its own. Although it doesn't look easy, moving around food that's the same size as you are. Arian searches for a safe place to eat, taking short breaks between moves. Once a successful hunt has been carried out, these leopards continue eating their prey until there is nothing left. Mongolia boasts a comparatively high number of snow leopards. According to the IUCN, an estimated 900 to 1200 snow leopards inhabit the Mongolian mountains. The territory of any given leopard will differ according to the sufficiency of prey in the area. Compared to females, the males roam over much wider distances, and each male will typically have two females. It's a, it is important to study the snow leopard because it is a, a threatened species, and without knowledge it will be much harder to save them. Since it's the top predator, if you, if you save that species, you cannot create an umbrella, so all the other species living in this land, for example Tost, they will also be able to survive because their habitat will be saved. So, you sort of, uh, as a bonus, you get all the ibex and rodents and plants and, and everything else living in the mountains. So, yeah, by aiming, focusing on one species, you save all the others too. So I think this would probably be the most valuable uh, While searching for one leopard that had been without a signal for a few days, the researchers made an important discovery. It's ready. The steep rock walls make the place difficult to approach. As they expected, the mother leopard lies embracing her newborn cub.
The researchers struggle to find a couple of new cubs in a year, but they don't give up the search. This time, however, Sunde has discovered two week old cubs. It was a discovery that took a lot of patience. They were found in a previously uninvestigated gap between the rocks. This is the first time the team has ever found newborn cubs in the wild. They measure the cub's height, weight, and other identifying statistics before inserting identity chips in their ears. And all of this takes less than 10 minutes to complete. <laughs> <laughs> 